what can they learn from you today with this ESS 60 that I'm very curious about? Uh, you know, it just seems like I have very superficial understanding of even what this is. Can you please go into some detail uh, as to how you came across this? Obviously, anyone watching the video can see this really cool structure that you're holding up that looks like a invisible soccer ball. It's like a Wonder Woman's invisible jet. Remember that <laughs> one? Great like you, you couldn't see, you could see her floating in like a stenciled white kind of like clear outline. jet, yeah. outline yeah. of a jet. Yeah. So you're holding up a soccer ball version of that. So please tell me about this. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, another really easy way to describe it is if you imagine a soccer ball, the lines on the soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atoms. So you have this spherical uh, molecule of 60 carbon atoms. Now, this was discovered in 1985 here in Houston. I'm in Houston uh, at Rice University uh, by three professors. Those three professors who discovered it actually went on to win the Nobel Prize in 1996 for the discovery. So what we're going to be talking about kind of the rest of this podcast is Nobel Prize winning technology. I mean, it's amazing stuff. When they first discovered it, um, it and it, it's the first closed cage molecule. And you're like, okay, well, that sounds really neat. Uh, but it was discovered in 1985. And there's actually a new symbol in chemistry because of this molecule. Wow. The at symbol, yeah, like it's, it's incredibly important. The at symbol, which we're familiar with our email addresses, lanthanum at C60 means that the, a lanthanum atom is trapped inside of it because the cage is big enough for any atom on the periodic chart to get inside of it, to physically be trapped inside of it. So I'll get a little geeky. It's not ionically bonded. It's not covalently bonded with the exterior of the molecule. It's physically trapped inside of it. So again, there's this new symbol in chemistry. Uh, right away, they recognized that it was gonna have a, an am amazing properties. Uh, it's harder than a diamond. It'll actually turn into, into a diamond. It's got six fold symmetry. So what that means is that there's six planes around this soccer ball shape that it has symmetry. What that does is give it incredible resilience. You can actually fire one of these ESS60 molecules at a plate of steel at 15,000 miles an hour and it'll just bounce back. Most molecules would shred into pieces. So it's incredibly strong um, and, and, and it tends to perform as well or better than the current best material in almost every application. So it makes better inks, it makes better tires, it makes better solar cells, it makes better batteries. The thing, that, the reason that it's not used uh, ubiquitously yet is it's very expensive. In fact, when I first started the company manufacturing this back in 1991, uh, it was selling for $6,000 per gram. That's wow. a good, good place to have a pregnant pause. $6,000 per gram is an amazingly expensive material. And it's actually kind of the reason SES Research, the original company, and now My Vital C, uh, the retail product, uh, it came into existence. My business partner was working at, uh, at the University of Houston campus. That's where we met, go Cougs. Um, and mm -hmm. he was working at the Texas Center for Superconductivity, which is uh, inside of the U of H campus. And he, he, he was working for Dr. Paul Chu who's a really famous um, professor in superconductivity space. And he was actually separating this molecule. He was actually separating it. It's got kind of cousin molecules. And if you want to isolate pure forms of it, then he was actually isolating those pure forms. And one day, Dr. Paul Chu came in and was like, hey, you guys are young guys. This, this is selling for $6,000 a gram. Why don't you go start a company? And my business partner was from a, a, an entrepreneurial background. And boom, he was, he was off and running. I was studying mechanical engineering at the University of Houston. And he got enlisted me because... The, the, to build the equipment because there's processes that are involved in manufacturing these uh, that are, well, well, really, it's basically vaporizing two graphite rods in a reactor. And the local temperatures of that vaporization, graphite's one of the harder materials to, to vaporize, the local temperatures uh, are actually the, the temperature of the sun. So like it's got a lot of heat that's gonna gotta get out of there. So I, I came in and did the drawings, helped with the design, actually helped hand build it myself. Uh, and then we were off and running uh, manufacturing and distributing carbon nanomaterials in 1991. And so your audience is probably going, okay, we heard eclectic background 
and we're talking about 90% extension of life and he just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> right, right, right. I, 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 what do these things all have, uh, you know, in common, you know, what's right. It's like, right. How, how am I going to live longer? Because th this guy was making something crazy uh, with his mechanical engineering background in Houston. Yeah. So the answer is, um, when you have a material that looks so promising, you understand that we might be working with it as humans and like working with the material in large quantities and you need to understand the safety of the material, right? So there's all sorts of safety studies that they do. So they did a toxicity study for various reasons. They actually thought that this soccer ball shape, this ESS60 molecule would be toxic. Uh, and so they did this toxicity study. They published the results. It was at, at the University of Paris. They published the results in 2012. And instead of being toxic, well, in that study, they gave rats water, rats olive oil, and rats olive oil with ESS60 in it. Instead of being toxic, those rats that were given the olive oil, really the My Vital C formula, lived 90% longer than the control group, and they all died without tumors. Again, good place for a pregnant pause because you may think 90% sounds like a really significant extension of life. Uh, it is. If the average human lived 90% uh, longer, we would live to 152 average. Not like That's not like, oh, somebody eventually made it that far. That's where the average human would live. It's also the single longest longevity experiment on mammals, peer-reviewed published research, of course, uh, in history. The next best way to live longer is calorie restriction. I call it the starve yourself one third to death diet. <laughs> Maybe I need to work on my marketing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that could use some work. So this thing, this ESS60, this molecule that you learned from, obviously with this, uh, you know, with, with, with the, the laboratory rats. Okay, so this yep. thing seems, seems very safe. Um, and seems to have a very positive effect on well, it's a, living, a living organism. Yeah, what, what's interesting is you say it seems very safe. And in fact, I mean, the data and the research was very clear at the time that it was safe. But I'm a conservative scientist, right? And so really that study came out in 2012, about mid-2013. We had people calling us going, how much in a dose? And you've got to think, like, I've got my kind of carbon nanomaterial scientist hat I'm just thinking, you put this in tires and inks and batteries and solar cells, you don't put it in the human body. So we actually added not for human consumption to all of our labeling, which had, we'd never, from, 19, from 1991 until 2013, we never had that labeling, we added it. Now, it's really important. The data was clear, it was safe. But our conservative nature doesn't allow us to kind of make those like leaps really quickly. So we did sell, it's actually challenging to make this material. So it's basically, obviously it's challenging to make this, we're dealing with local temperatures of the sun, then you've got to isolate it, that adds, you know, further adds to the cost, then you've got to make sure that you get, it, it, that requires solvents, you've got to make sure that all those solvents are removed, so we've got a great process for that. Um, and then you've got to mix it in oil. Uh, and in our case, the, the best oil is olive oil, and you, can, you can't get much in the oil but it goes into solution really slowly, right? So we've all maybe poured a little sugar into a glass of water or something, and we see that the sugar like dissolves instantly. Right. That's not how this molecule acts in olive oil. It will dissolve, but it really takes a long time. We actually end up um, mixing it for three weeks in our, in our large vats. They're uh, nitrogen backfilled. They're in the dark. They're all of these things to keep oxygen and light and everything out of them. So because that process is a little bit lengthy, we were selling, we're still you know, in our minds, not for human consumption, but we were selling that ESS60 molecule in olive oil so that people could reproduce the rat study if they wanted to. Now we were getting testimonials from people here and there, pretty, pretty amazing testimonials. But if you fast forward to 2017, a guy with a really big YouTube following and then really kind of a, a great marketing lady started pushing the material out there. And he started talking about all the benefits he was getting from taking it on a daily basis. Now, all of a sudden, our phone went from, hey, how much in a dose? Hey, this amazing thing is happening to me to like ringing off the hook. 
like it's it's time to consider it because I'm I'm a scientist and I'm an entrepreneur. This is kind of like some crazy thing la- landing. My, in fact, I like to I like to share this kind of piece, which is I think people typically become supplement people, men or women, one of two ways, right? One of them is, is they wake up and they decide they want to be wealthy and they decide they're going to do it with supplements. And I have no problem with people being wealthy. I just didn't get here that way. The other is that may, they maybe have their own physical challenges or physical challenges of a loved one or something. And they go out and do the research and they find kind of the right protocol to heal that challenge. And now they want to save the world. Hopefully, it doesn't surprise you that I'm all four people saving the world. <laughs> I just didn't end up here that way. I've been manufacturing this, this ESS60 molecule uh, since 1991. They do this crazy toxicity study uh, in 2012. Those rats live 90% longer. Those rats have no tumors. And then now, in two th- com- coming to the end of 2017, really in 2018, I'm like, people are calling for what I have like just incessantly. And so I sat down with my business partner. We're still business partners. Like we've been in a relationship longer than either one of us have been with our wives. Like we're, we're, we're like the old married business couple. Right. (laughs) And we sat down and said, so the literature was safe back in 2012, a little bit more stuff has come out that kind of confirms that safety are we going to sell it? What are we going to do with this? And really, uh, it, for me, it's the most important question is the moral question. Can, am I comfortable selling it? I take it. My wife takes it. Everybody on our team takes it. Yes, I'm comfortable selling it. Really what made it, um, what, what really kind of made me make the decision was the testimonials that we were already getting, right? Was, uh, you know, people sharing with us just these amazing things. And, so, and, and it used to be in the early days, I've, I've kind of maybe gotten better at telling the story, but I would tell people, I'd be like, Chris, if I just keep telling you the testimonials that we're getting, your belief is just going to plummet, right? Because in the beginning of the show, you talk about extend your life. And, and if I came to you, just I've got 30 seconds to tell you anything. And I'm like, hey, Chris, this will extend your life by 90%. You're going, yeah, probably not. Like, <laughs> it probably won't. First off, if, if the data that I've collected, and actually there's some marketing data that supports it, you're not actually interested in living longer, right? Because you equate it with living infirmed. And then next you're like, yeah, but I, I've never heard of anything that can extend your life appreciably at all. I mean, we were all excited about resveratrol and it's really kind of never manifested. Um, most people don't know about the efficacy of calorie restriction. And then when they find out, they're like, well, not doing that. Right. So, so there really (laughs) is no good way to live longer right now. So, so that, that marketing piece was really, was really tough. Like, and that's something that I've had had to deal with, but when people are coming back to us and they're sharing things like, you know, reduced pain, right? I can talk about my own experience. Uh, I played soccer for 25 years. Uh, I had a left knee pain. I had it, I don't know, really about the time I quit soccer, it was just there and it was always there. Uh, And about a month into taking my product, that pain actually went away. Uh, Then you start talking about, uh, I I actually have a, I really am super geeky. I have a spreadsheet of my migraines. I used to get four or five migraines a year and I was trying to figure out like what caused them. Maybe I exercised too much the day before, you know, maybe I imbibed too much the day before, maybe whatever, just some extra stress. So I was trying to figure that out. In 2018, when I started taking the product daily, I didn't get a single migraine. So that's a that's like a one off story, which is really nice. Four or five migraines, not that many. My wife actually had a, a used to get more than nine migraines a month, uh, and I know it's nine. I know it's more than nine because she got a medication prescribed to her, and they would only give her nine of them. So oh, like wow. any migraine number 10, 11, 12, if she got there, she had to just endure. Uh, when she started taking this regularly, uh, she's down to one every other month. Right, so you couple those two things, and I think it starts to to paint a story. And I'm actually going to give you data, no one else has. I actually got it yesterday, so this is this is pretty cool. And and I may mess up the numbers, but the the premise will be right. So we've got this doctor. I had a conversation with him about six months months ago, Doctor Hunt. Um, he called me yesterday, and he's like, "Hey, I did this little study. I did a DNA age test." 
And, and I, I'm trying to remember, it's DNA Age is the company. I did this DNA Age test, which I didn't, wasn't really aware. I, like I knew they were out there, but I don't really know anything and I still need to learn more about them so I can speak more intelligently about them. But apparently they're able to kind of like identify your DNA age versus your actual age, right? Your, your life on this planet age. Um, and they're able to do it within a month, right? Wow. Which is, and he said, most people's goal is if you take, take a, uh, you know, a, a test in the beginning at five months, what, you, what you're hopeful to show is that you've only aged four months, right? So you're slowing the aging process down. So Dr. Hunt shared with me, he had two patients. They, they were taking our product and they actually had a reversal of age in this study. 